Power on the tablet. On the right lower side of the tablet, press the power on button. Once the computer boots, it will automatically launch our application. Once the application is launched, in the lower left hand corner, this is a touch screen. You can either touch power on or you can use one of the F1 hotkey to power the instrument on. Once the warm up process starts, this will take approximately five to seven minutes before it will advance to the next screen. Once the VMD has completed its warm up process, and all checks were okay. This is the screen that will appear. The instrument is ready to be used. Across the bottom here we have shutdown, zero, test, and start survey. If we want to zero the instrument at any point in a gas-free environment, just hit zero. The instrument is zeroed. To start a survey, we're just going to hit start survey. Across the horizontal axis here, we will have two minutes worth of data. <laughs> Across the vertical axis is your concentration in ppm per meter. That will automatically auto range from 0 to 1000 ppm per meter. At any point, if you want to test the VMD, there is an internal test vial built into the receiver of it. If we just hit the test button, it will drop that internal cell in and then eject it. Up here in the upper right, it will either test pass or test fail. If the test were to fail, we would want to try to run a calibration. At any point, you have an option to stop or pause a survey. When we start a survey, it opens a data log file and then all the information is stored in there. If we pause the survey, it will pause the survey and keep that existing data log file open. At any point, we can go back and restart. I do recommend anytime you pause to zero first and then restart and then it'll start storing to the same data log file it had opened when we started the survey. If we stop the survey, it's going to close that data log file. When we start a survey again, it opens a new data log file and all those are date stamped, time stamped. So what we'll do is we'll just go ahead and stop the survey. Over here is a standby feature. Uh, it's similar to a PMD standby feature in that when we hit standby, it will actually shut the lamp off on the VMD. When we wake the VMD back up, it will be a two minute warm up process instead of a five to seven minute warm up process if we were to shut the VMD down. Up here is your warm up tab. That's our survey, user setup, settings, and debug. Over here, we can close the application. We can convert to a KMO, and this is if a PMD is Bluetooth to the tablet, and also GPS. Since we are indoors, we do not have a GPS signal, but once you are outdoors, your GPS Latin lawn will appear in this white box. To calibrate the instrument, we must have the survey stopped, and we're going to hit calibrate. It will ask us to please place the cell in the light path and press OK. This is our calibration cell, and I'm just going to place it on either the source or the receiver side, and hit OK. In about five to seven seconds, we should see ready. So calibration passed. All the calibration records are stored to a folder on the desktop of the tablet. If we wanted to start the survey with the calibration cell in, we should read around 100 ppm per meter. If we try to zero the instrument with the calibration cell in, the zero will fail. We're not going to allow you to zero out 100 ppm per meter. 
So I'm going to remove the calibration cell and then re-zero and now we are ready to take another to, to start a survey. If we start the survey, if a low light condition is encountered, the, the tablet will automatically warn you that there was a low light. You will need to see what is obstructing the light between the source and the receiver and then hit OK. Once that has been corrected, the light hits zero. If the light passes software limitations, then it will go back to the ready screen. And then you can restart your survey by either pressing F5 or just tapping the screen. Right now, this is the chart, and we also have a show table. This is the table view. Uh, it gives you the date, time, and the PPM reading of the VMD. To go back to chart, we'll just go back to show chart, and our chart is back. I will just run a test function here. So we have two minutes worth of data we've crossed here. Once we get to that two minute mark, it'll automatically fall off. Our last peak readings, and then if the PMD was Bluetooth to the tablet, we would have a PMD reading over here. At any point, if you want to clear the chart to clear the peaks, just hit clear chart. And it'll start from scratch. It does not erase any data, it just simply clears the chart. I'm just going to stop the survey and the user setup. So your x-axis time is 120. This is in seconds. So that's two minutes worth of data. If you want to change the x-axis, you can change it from 30 seconds to 300 seconds or five minutes. The y-axis is currently set to zero. This is your gas concentration. This can be set anywhere from zero to a thousand ppm. Note that if it's set at zero, that is the same as setting it at 1000 ppm. It will automatically auto range to 1000 ppm. If you want to limit the max range of the gas concentration, just simply type in whatever you would like. So for instance, we'll do 300, hit save. Now our chart will automatically grow between zero and 300 ppm per meter. Activate alarm beep. If this box is checked, then the alarm will sound on the tablet. If it is unchecked, the alarm will not sound. To change the alarm point, just simply tap in the white box, and we can set that anywhere between 0 and 1,000 ppm. Uh, this one is currently set at 3 ppm per meter for an alarm. The default is 10 ppm per meter. So we'll just type in what we want, hit the save disk, and now it's set for 10 ppm per meter. The filtering band and the LDL uh, are preset from the factory and those will not be adjusted by the end user. They are password protected, so you do need a password to access those two features. Perform advanced cal. If this box is checked, every time we run a calibration, it will do what we refer to as an advanced calibration. If what that does is it looks for its, it searches for its optimum temp. Now, an advanced calibration can last, you know, five to ten minutes, uh, where a standard calibration uh, lasts for about five to ten seconds. So, I would recommend that you leave that unchecked. If the instrument fails calibration twice, it will automatically go into an advanced calibration on the, on the third attempt. As far as this box here, integrate PMD, activate streaming. You can integrate a PMD where we can Bluetooth to the tablet and record it, all the PMD readings at the same time uh, as we're taking VMD readings. If you wanted to activate streaming, meaning streaming of the VMD readings out to a tablet or a separate device, we would just uncheck integrate PMD and we check activate streaming. Once that is checked, then you select your COM port and baud rate and then you would hit save. So we'll go back, we'll uncheck activate streaming, and we'll integrate the PMD. Hit save.
Down here is your calibration log. Every time the VMD is turned on, it automatically syncs the calibrations from the VMD to the tablet. If you want to get the cal log, just hit get cal log. And these are your last five successful or failed calibrations, either or. The last five calibrations in general. If you want to save the cal log, we can just hit save cal log, even though it's automatically going to do that um, you know, when the VMD turns on. If we go back to our survey menu, this is where we would convert the file to a KML. To convert a file to a KML to view through Google Earth, we're just going to click on Convert File to KML. We're going to select the file that we would like to convert. Here are the two folders, 2014 and 2015. These folders will automatically be populated at the beginning of every year. So we'll select 2014. And then at the beginning of every month, it'll automatically create a folder. And then they are assigned by the month. So we'll select November. I'll just choose my first file. And then we will assign three for a yellow pin and 10 for a red pin. The red pin will always be your default alarm point. We'll hit convert. I'm going to, I have my flash drive plugged in. Select my flash drive and then hit save. So successfully converted file and saved it to my flash drive. Now I can remove my flash drive, plug it into a computer with Google Earth and actually see my coordinates. As you can see, your route is the blue line. We selected what we wanted yellow and red to be. And then your test PPM is your orange pin. Anytime you hit the test feature, which is here, it will automatically drop a pin on that coordinate and give the gas concentration. And it'll appear as a green uh, a reading or a red reading. Uh, the test pin will always be orange. A green reading would indicate that the test passed. A red reading on the map with the orange pin will indicate that the test failed. To shut down, it'll ask you if you're sure that you would like to shut the VMD down. If we click yes, it will shut the VMD down and we will have to power it back up and wait another five to seven minutes for warm up. If we select no, the VMD will still continue to run. If we accidentally close the application, the VMD is still on because it did not receive the shutdown command. So if the application is accidentally closed, the VMD is going to run for 10 minutes before it powers itself off. If we open the application back up and power the VMD on before it powers itself off, we will not have to wait the five to seven minutes for warm up. Power on. And the VMD is ready to be used. As far as the settings tab, uh, this is for factory use only, and also the debug tab, that is for factory use only. If you want to save the warm-up, the data, you would just click on warm-up, and since I closed the application, the warm-up that we actually did initially is not here. Uh, as far as the standby feature, we did talk about that earlier, but if we select standby, the lamp has been powered off on the VMD. Current draw is at a minimum. And if we want to wake it back up, it's going to uh, force you to wait two minutes, and then the instrument will be ready to be used. To view the KML on Google Earth, just double click the file. Google Earth will automatically launch.
and load the file. So this is an example of a survey. As you can see here, we started the black pins represent either a start, pause, or restart. Your red pin would be whatever you set your red pin threshold to, and your yellow pin would be whatever you set your yellow pin threshold to. As you can see, the orange pin here, if we click on it, 9.6, and that reading is in green. So that means a test was performed at that location, and it passed the test feature. This would indicate a yellow pin leak and the red pin indicate a alarm leak. And over here is where we actually ended our survey. If you want to see a street view, you can drop the guy. And then we have a 360 street view. To exit the street view, just click exit street view. And then we can zoom back out.